Let's take a look at 7-3. 7-3 we're going to be looking at using sums and difference identities in order to simplify and find exact uh, trig ratios. Uh, let's first let's lay a foundation for why we need these sum and difference identities. If I were to ask you what the sine of 30 is, using a unit circle you could easily tell me that the sine of 30 is one half. Now what about the sine of 60? The sine of 60, same thing, unit circle tells us it's the square root 3 over 2. If I ask what the sine of 90 is, sine of 90 would be 1. So, if I were to ask you what the sine of 30 degrees plus 60 degrees was, <clears throat> ideally what you'd do first is order of operations. You'd probably simplify inside the parentheses, get yourself a 90 there, and say, hey, wait a minute, it's just 1. So, in other words, the sine of 30 plus 60 is 1. Well, what if we didn't know the two angle measurements? And what if those two angle measurements weren't on the unit circle where we could easily reference them? How could we explain to somebody how to take the sine of two angles added together. Would it be like this? Can we take the sine of x and the sine of y? Um, let's see if this doesn't work by seeing if we can give a counterexample. How about we just use the example we just had here, sine 30 plus 60. Let's see if that's equal to the sine of 30 plus the sine of 60. Well, if we do the sine of 30 and the sine of, sine of 60, we get the sine of 90 sine of 30 is 1 half and the sine of 60 is square root 3 over 2. Simplifying both sides, sine of 90 would be 1, which is not equal to 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2, right? We take an irrational number like the square root of 3 right here, and if we add a rational number there, we're going to end up with an irrational number. Now if we take a rational add an irrational get irrational. An irrational number divided by a rational number will be irrational. So there's no way we can get a rational number like 1 to be equal to that irrational number there. So this statement here is false. Likewise, we can make the general statement that this definitely also is not true. And could we say the same thing for other sums and differences like these ones here? We sure can. None of those are going to be true. So it's the same could be said for tangent also. So what do these things equal? That's why we need some trig identities for, for them. Let's look at sine first. If we let alpha and beta represent all the, measures of, uh, the measurements of two angles, then this identity holds true for all alphas and all the betas here. So the sine of alpha plus minus beta, and I'll get to that in a second, is equal to the sine alpha times cosine beta plus minus cosine alpha times sine beta. What this identity statement here means is that if you're looking at sine of alpha plus beta, which is this symbol here, the plus sign. Notice it's on top. We must use the plus sign that's also on top there. And we hit use this equation here. Sine of alpha co times cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. If it's negative underneath, then we're going to use these ones here. Sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. Let's put this to work. Suppose we're trying to find the exact value of the sine of 75. Realize that if we were trying to do this with a unit circle, 75 is not on the unit circle with those common angles. So what we can do with that 75 though is we can break apart 75 into two angles added together that are on the unit circle like 45 and 30. Now since we have a sine and a sum of two sine angles, we're going to use the sine formula. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Think about that cadence. We're going to compare that cadence, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, to cosine in, uh, of alpha plus beta, and you'll notice it'll be a little bit different. So whenever we're dealing with sine of two angles, either add or subtracted, the cadence kind of goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So then we throw those in there. Sine 45, cosine 30, plus cosine 45, sine 30. A nice little thing to stop and do before you move on is just double check to make sure there aren't repeats. Notice the two signs I put here in red, one's 45 and one's 30, so I didn't repeat there. Cosine 30, cosine 45, no repeats there. Once we have that put in place, now we're going to turn it over to our unit circle. Let's figure out what the sine uh, and cosine are of those given angles. Sine of 45 would be square root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30, that's square root 3 over 2. And we're multiplying those together. And then we're going to add the cosine of 45, square root 2 over 2. 
sine of 30, that's one half. So we're going to be multiplying first those values and then adding them afterwards. Now, one thing that is okay to do here is perfectly okay to multiply two radicals together like that. It's okay to multiply these together. So I multiply those together. We get square root 2 times square root 3, that gives us square root 6. Square root 2 times 1 gives us square root 2. And then 2 times 2 down below gives us the 4s. May the 4s be with you. <laughs> and then look at this addition here. Now, unlike multiplication, addition, we can't add up those radicals. We're not going to say it's square root of 8. Uh, so all the best we can do here is just write those side by side, just like that. Square root 6 plus square root 2 over 4. Now, let's take a look at the cosine version of this sums and differences. Something jumps out at me as different right away. Notice the cadence is different. With sine, if we go back here, sine, it was sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Notice here, it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. That is different. Another thing jumps out as being different here is if you look carefully, Look at that. Minus plus. That's a bit unusual. Looks like a typo. It's not a typo. It's intentional. It's designed to help us know which identity to use when we're doing either a sum or a difference with cosine. Take a look. If the cosine, if we're dealing with a cosine of alpha plus beta, because that is a plus sign here, plus sign on top, we have to use the minus sign, which is also on top there. And then the reverse is true with alpha minus beta. Let's look at an example. Use a sum or difference identity to find the exact value, so no decimals allowed, of the cosine of 735. <clears throat> At big angle like 735, we could make a lot of work for ourselves and try and come up with two larger angles to add up to 735. That's fine. Uh, but I think we can make this lot work a lot simpler if we just realize that 735 is coterminal to another angle between 0 and 360. So how do we figure that out? How about we subtract 360 from it, and then that's still not good enough. How about we subtract another 360? So essentially we're subtracting 720 from 735, which gives us 15 degrees. So here's the skinny of it. Cosine of 735 is no different than finding the cosine of 15. So let's find the cosine of 15. Now, I think the most direct way to using two unit circle angles to arrive at 15 degrees is if we do 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. We could do 65 minus 45, and here's the beauty part about this. If you use 65 and 45, you would still get the same correct answer as we get when we're going to be doing 45 and 30. So 45 minus 30. Now reminder, we're going to be using a difference identity for cosine. So looking at that difference identity, because it's minus here, we need to use a plus sign here. So we want the one that's being added here. So cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. Turn it over to our unit circle. Square root 2 over 2 times square root 3 over 2, plus square root 2 over 2 times 1 half, top times top right here. Wait a second. This looks familiar. Square root 6. Down below, we get a 4, because 2 times 2. Here, plus sign, square root 2 over 4. Hmm. Get our final answer here. If we flip back, square root 6 plus square root 2 was exactly the same as what we did with the sine of 75. Interesting, got the same answer. So here's a little bit of a tip, ladies and gentlemen. When you're working on these problems here with sines and cosines only, is that pretty much every single time you're going to get a 4 here. The reason why you're going to get a 4 is because when we're using these unit circle angles here, every single one of them is always going to have those 2's down there. So it's going to make sense that we're always going to end up with a 4 down there. And then we're going to end up with a lot of square root 6's and square root 2's because of all this nature we're getting here because of these angles we're using here. Right? So when you're trolling through these problems here and working with these here, Always remember that a lot of cases is going to end up with square root 6 and square root 2s. Now, will it always be positive square root 6 plus square root 2 over 4? No. No, it depends on where you're located here. 
Let's take a look at some more examples. Cosine of 165. What two unit circle angles would make sense to use here? Uh, let's go with, um, let's do 120 plus 45. That'll work. Now, because this is cosine of 120 plus 45, the identity dictates that we have to use a minus sign here with our formula. So, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, uh, cosine of 120. I'm going to back up here a little bit. Do you notice what I did there before I even started writing a single thing on here? It's actually said the cadence in my head, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. I've been doing that a lot lately, and, and definitely in class, and I think what I'm just trying to, what I think I'm doing there is just making sure I have the right order before I write, because uh, as you can see, there's the sines and cosines are very similar to each other in terms of their identities. So it'd be very easy to get them confused. So I say that cadence, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, to kind of minimize the chance of making a mistake. So cosine, cosine, minus sine, and then sine, sine. Keep the same order with your angles, 120. All right, let's use the unit circle. Something interesting happens here. When you look at 120 degrees, notice that the cosine is actually uh, negative one half. Cosine 45, square root two over two, minus sine, sine of 120. If you go to that same spot in that unit circle where the negative one half was, notice that the sine there was actually positive square root 3 over 2, and then sine of 45, square root 2 over 2. Now it's time to multiply. We have negative square root 2. Remember earlier where we end up with that 4 all in one fraction? I'm going to jump straight there. Put the 4 right there. So we have negative square root 2, here's a minus sign, and then we have square root 3 times square root 2, which is square root 6. There we be. Sine 15. Let's look at that one as, I don't know, sine of 45 minus 30. Degrees. What's the cadence for a sine summer difference? Yeah, watch out. We have sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So now let's fill those in. All right, unit circle time. Simplifying time, and there we are. Usual suspects there, square root sixes and square root twos and fours down below, just ordered in a different way. Now, we'll talk about tangent here in the next video.